Hey everybody, welcome back to Jeff Bowl Central. We're checking out uh, Star Trek Resurgence today. This is a game that came out last year, mm, I think it was May, May of 2023. Uh, and I didn't get a chance to play it. It, it was on sale uh, last week, so I picked it up on the Xbox Series X. Uh, and I played it, and what I liked it enough uh, to be inspired to make this video. And the purpose of this video is to establish if this game here, Star Trek Resurgence, is in the running, if not the best Star Trek game ever made. <laughs> it's kind of a loaded question because we're going back to the 80s that the first Star Trek game was ever made. I Just about an hour ago, I checked out a Star Trek video game retrospective, the entire history of Star Trek games, just to refresh my memory. Because I've played a lot of Star Trek games over the years. I'm a pretty big Star Trek fan. Uh, there have been a lot. There have been a lot of games. Mostly in the kind of strategic, ship-to-ship -ship realm, PC-style uh, Star Trek games. This is a unique one because it's story-driven. Uh, it's 100% story-driven. In fact, it's, it's, it's more like an interactive uh, movie uh, than it is kind of like a traditional action-style uh, uh, video game. Um, and that's because it's uh, Telltale st style. It's actually uh, been developed by some of the people who uh, were with Telltale back at the height of that company. If you're not familiar with Telltale games, they made games, and they make them again now. It's a company again, by the way. <laughs> but in their heyday, they were known for creating a genre that was just that. That was 100% uh, cinematic storytelling uh, and, you know, occasionally, or more than occasionally, but there's, you know, there's some, uh, in this game, for instance, there's some phaser fights, there's some technical things, you have to beam people, transport people, you have to work on uh, uh, panels uh, in engineering and switching out isolinear chips, you have to pilot a shuttle, all sorts of things that you can do that is interactive, that does make it a video game, don't get me wrong, it's a video game. But this is a much more narrative kind of like um, multi-branching. The choices that you make in the dialogue uh, and the choices that you make uh, action-wise. And also uh, the, the relationships you develop between all these different Starfleet characters, all these different Star Trek uh, uh, personnel and stuff, including Spock. Spock has a cameo, uh, uh, Commander Riker from Next Gen, although he's a captain now, Captain Riker. The era for this, by the way, is post the Next Gen movies, just a bit. That's, that's where we're at in the Star Trek timeline. Uh, regardless, what you're going to get with this is a, is a game that's not much of a challenge. The, the, the enjoyment comes 100% from sinking into this story and guiding it with the choices that you make. Uh, in fact, if you, when you pause the game, in a normal video game you pause it, right? And you see your whole list of inventory, you see your skill trees, you see uh, role-playing elements, you see all sorts of things that help you understand the game. The only thing that you see when you pause this, as, as part from like, you know, settings and stuff like that, is uh, relationships. They, they tell you between the two playable characters, there's a, a commander and then there's a crewman, and you play them both. It swaps back and forth over 40 episodes, and each episode is pretty short. It's like a 15, 20 minute little piece of game. Um, you can actually switch between the two of them in the menu to see where they stand with all the people that you've met in the game. So it really does prize relationship. It really does prize storytelling. And it really does put a, a premium on authenticity to Star Trek, you know? And not everybody's a Star Trek fan. I figure if you're here for this review, you might, you might just be a Star Trek fan. Listen, I grew up on Star Trek. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, 39 years old, so when I was a kid, the big Star Trek thing was the next generation. But I have a love for the original cast, the original Star Trek from the 60s. I have a love for all the new modern stuff that Star Trek is doing on uh, Paramount Plus. You know, all the new shows like Strange New Worlds and Discovery and Picard. Like, I like Star Trek. I like all the movies. I love Star Trek. So this was a real treat for me. And I got to tell you, because it's kind of an indie game, more or less, uh, even though it uses a big license, 
and because it doesn't it didn't have the budget and then look it has clear issues uh graphically most of mostly it's graphically there's nothing really that holds it back from being a playable experience but you know in the very least character models are stiff animations are stiff uh you have a lot of graphical hiccups like things popping in and popping out where they shouldn't you know it's not a it's not a seamless presentation and i knew that going in because i figured you know it's a cheap game it's it's from a le an, a, an unknown studio um, and I was really, really impressed by this game, 100% because the story is a really, really nice Star Trek story. It's got all the tension, all the drama, all the uh, techno babble, <laughs> all the scientific kind of like, you know, pseudo scientific, but just realistic enough, you know, Star Trek. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, as someone, as someone, in fact, I'm watching all the next gen episodes right now. I'm doing like a next gen marathon. It's been taking me about a month. And so, you know, just little touches, like every time one of, one of the little mini episodes starts up in the game, it, it puts a little, uh, text banner up at the top right corner that tells you the name of the episode. It's in the same font as the text of uh, the episode intros on Next Gen. It's little touches like that. It sounds right, it feels like, it's, it's good track. And you know what, even if you don't like Star Trek or you're not super familiar with the universe, this is still a worthwhile game if you're into story-driven stuff. If you're into Telltale games, it's a good, it's a good example of that genre. If you're into um, uh, experiences that are not super challenging, but are super fulfilling, super rewarding, um, nonetheless. I really, really did enjoy Star Trek Resurgence. So let's return back to uh, our original question, which is, is it the greatest Star Trek game ever? And that might seem like a silly question because I did mention it has a lot of glitches and stuff, which it has some, it has some graphical hiccups. And it's not the prettiest game you're gonna play in 2024. Uh, it came out in 2023. Uh, but. You know what? Watching that retrospective of all the Trek games, I gotta tell you, Pickens are a little slim for greatest game ever, okay? And that's not to blame Star Trek or to blame the developers of all those games, because I know, I know they, they made the best product they could. But let's be honest, uh, Star Trek doesn't have the premium in the... Uh, in the licensed product space that some other, like Star Wars. Star Wars is always going to get more money thrown at it than Star Trek, right? So this game, knowing that it is as good as it is, knowing that it really does simulate or uh, kind of emulate a good uh, episode of a Star Trek show, this is, this is a hell of a Star Trek game. It's really impressive. If I was giving it a score, like I was reviewing it properly, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. And I'm going to say, best Star Trek game ever, Star Trek Resurgence. That's it. Best Star Trek game ever. You can call me, you can call me a liar, you can call me a, you can come, just don't call me a cynic about the Trek. I know what I'm talking about. Check this out if you like Star Trek, or narrative games, or Telltale games. That's it. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, check out more of my videos. Woo, 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 woo. She had feelings She had lies